Hey Tube users and or abusers, I'm Drew Drew and in this video I'm going over the massive amount of more pedals I own and use on a regular basis. That's Moore, M-O-O-E-R, the audio company based in Shenzhen, China. Here's a brief overview of what you're in for. This little guy here is my live effects loop pedal board and it's filled with only more pedals. Now, these ones coming up on the rack are part of the micro preamp line. For a time, I was using the hell out of these to get great amp tones without breaking the bank. Uh, they are all based on iconic amplifiers and have some amazing technologies and features in them. However, I might be replacing them, and that would be because of a beast of a product more recently put out. Um, these coming up here are uh, delay pedals. More had so many that I tried a handful of them and I found several I liked. And here is the previously mentioned beast, uh, the preamp live. I call it PAL and it's fantastic. Finally, we have the radar and the baby bomb 30, both also fantastic. Up front here, I want to say that I'm not connected to Moore in any way and I'm not being paid to do this video. Um, so why the effort you ask and why the almost love affair with my collection of more pedals um to say that more is killing it in their product line right now would be an understatement their products are quality and inexpensive not cheap but inexpensive and also why wouldn't you want to go smaller especially for live shows if you're solely responsible for your gear um yeah there are as many quality pedal makers out there as there are quality pedals but look at this bullshit i mean look at this tank and don't put that in the comments i know that it's just an old wives tale that these were made out of tank metal after the fall of the soviet union you know, told by babushkas to get their dead dushkas to eat their cabbage. But but seriously, I mean, look at this thing. This used to be on my board. Um, here, look at what it replaced. Um, that little orange thing, it replaced that giant petal. And, uh, this is actually a great place to start because this is the only more pedal on uh, my front of amp board. A quick aside here, um, normally I'd use the audio captured from miking my amp and recording it into a DAW. I just listened back to that and because most of the applications I use these pedals for are largely live. I felt that that was a bit disingenuous and might not be the best method. Um, as such, the audio you hear is coming from the most part from the mic on the camera. Um, if that changes, I'll let you know. Pew. Pew, pew, pew. Pew. Okay, so let's talk signal chain. Um, guitar with uh, two humbuckers and then out into my board, uh, my front of amp board, uh, tuner, into wah, a few yada yadas, and then finally the 90 orange, um, my, my mod pedal here, it's a, a phaser. So uh, then out of there, into the clean channel of my uh, V130, um, and clean channel is...
so what is it? What is uh, Phaser? Why is it here? Why is it the only more pedal uh, on the front of my amp? Well, those are all dumb questions, and I'm out of here. All that's happening, babe. When your life's been red. My apologies, I have slowly been going crazy making this video, and uh, I had the sudden urge that, hey, if you're not getting paid, why not be an ass? <laughs> so, as I said before I was so rude to you, um, the 90 Orange is a phaser. It's a modulation pedal, and I like to have those near the end of the chain uh, on my front of amp board um, that way it's not coloring the distortion or overdrive it's being more colored by those things i it gives me some options um but i think i prefer that sound uh you could put it in the effects loop but i didn't really like it there um and it honestly it was a lot of trial and error before I figured out their placement and some of it was a serious learning curve. It took me years to figure out, um, but that's a lot of fun. It's, it's fun to play with pedals and, and figure that stuff out. As almost as fun as saying the word fu- All right, so we're gonna move over to my effects loop pedal board. And I use the four cable method. So it goes directly into my effects loop. Uh, this board, however, is going to be getting uh, some big changes soon, and I'll take you through it how it is right now and explain what's likely to happen in the next weeks. I have some big boutique pedals coming that I just ordered to replace some of the gear, and I'm going to do a demo of those, uh, putting it up in the early December, um, earlier part of December. Uh, just a quick note about the case here. It is also by Moore. Uh, it's the Firefly M6, um, and the pedals fit perfect and snug in there. Uh, here's the top of the case. You can see all the nice little foam, little bits in there. Very nice. <laughs> to start the uh, demo, I'm going to use a little clean tone. To the far right of the effects loop pedal board is a flanger pedal. It's called the E-Lady. A uh, flanger is also a modulation pedal. Um, I like the way it sounds better through the loop though. Uh, I'm likely pulling it off the board because I almost never use it, but we'll see. After the E-Lady, we have um, the delay pedal that won out over all the other delay pedals. It's called the Repeater. I don't know exactly what I have the milliseconds set to right now, but I do know how I like the decay. I like there to be no more than three repeats uh, for, the, for the current settings. And that third repeat, it's, it's just a whisper. And I also really prefer having my delay in the effects loop um, and it not going through the front of the amp. And it, it took me years to, to figure that out. I mean, I've been a guitarist for a long time before I'd learned that. Next, we have my reverb pedal, the Skyverb. Uh, 
<laughs> Skyverb. Skyverb sounds like I have a grammar god ruling over my board. So reverb is another effect. I prefer going through the effects loop. Um, that way it's not being colored by the gain stage of my amp uh, or the distortion pedals on my board. I like this pedal. I don't love it. Mostly because I hear some digital artifacts at the end of the signal of, of the decay, right as the echo decays. Now we have my compressor, the yellow comp. It's really close to my favorite compression pedal of all time, the Ibanez Compressor Limiter. But I don't use it a whole lot. And when I do, I only use it as something to color a clean tone. Um, something like... Next is one of the main reasons I first tried more pedals. It's a graphic equalizer, the G. I love my amp, but when I got it home, I noticed it was sounding like it needed a little boost in the higher frequencies. It wasn't muddy, it just needed um, something to kind of push through and, and send out those higher, higher frequencies. And this pedal definitely gives me that boost in a very smooth way without adding any extra volume or color. Last, here we have a noise gate that I just don't like. The noise killer. Um, it's just not doing it for me. It's more than likely coming off the board because I don't feel like I can control it or get what I want from it. So check this out. See how much it cuts. I mean, I, I have it either at noon um, somewhere around there, but once you get past that threshold and start going towards one, one o'clock, there's, there's just no sound coming through. All right, moving on to the preamp pedals. I initially got these to have some different amp sounds while not having to pay the massive expense as well as space requirements needed to have a lot of amps. Um, I'd seen reviews and thought I'd try a couple because the features seemed great. Um, when I really dialed them in, I found you could recreate some iconic amp sounds that we all know and love. Um, I even went as far as labeling the first ones I got uh, so I, I knew what they were trying to represent. Um, some of these are easier to dial in than others for me um, to utilize and, and get what they are supposed to sound like. Uh, okay, onto the features. They have two channels. So if you hold the button down, uh, you can switch in between having the two channels, clean channel and the dirtier, high gain, overdriven channel. And 
if you hold it down again, it just stays on that channel. You just turning it off, turning it on. Um, it also has a cab simulator in it. So if you hold this button down, it turns the cab sim on, which is pretty great. Uh, finally, it has a memory that is kind of neat. So say you're on the clean channel and you want, you know, the treble bass mids to be a certain way. Um, when you switch over to this channel, it memorizes that and you can just go ahead and change the uh, treble mid and bass on, on this channel. It's, it's pretty great. Okay, uh, we're going to go through these pretty quick and we're not gonna go through their clean channels. <laughs> Just the dirty channels today and you're gonna like it. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and get all the info right here. I, I have the names up, but some of the names have changed um, since they were first put out. And I have the pedals that don't correlate. Um, it's also gonna be a little more difficult to find out what the amps are that they're trying to emulate uh, because I have a feeling that they're trying to skirt some legal issues. Uh, so here we go. editing to the next board. Thank <laughs> you. 
on to the next one. Set like this kind of sounds like a chorus. And then set like this, uh, you can drop down by half steps. Which is kind of handy. A lot of my songs are uh, a half step down. And uh, setting up guitars so that they're an E flat. It's not like a really big deal, but it means that you have to have more guitars if you're gonna do the, the work live with um, other other bands, with other, with other stuff that you're doing. Um, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. Thing is, this one really does color the sound a lot. Like there's a little bit of latency too, but it's not bad. Uh, also, going to quickly review the Rage Machine. Um, it's awesome. I, I actually, I really, I did not expect to love this as much as I do. It's a great sounding drum. Another drive pedal I have here is the Black Secret. It's supposed to replicate the Rat um, in both uh, Vintage and Turbo. And honestly, I kind of found it meh. But it really, I think, to be fair, it should be driving another pedal. Driving an amp, something kind of like this. Without it. So yeah, it should be driving an amp or another pedal, just kind of adding a little bit more. All right, for 
the rest of the demo uh, review symposium a la more guitarist toys um, I'm going to just talk mostly um, we're down to the last three bits of gear and the first two are the more radar and the baby bomb 30 the baby bomb 30 um, it's something that all touring guitarists who use tube amps should have in their kits. Um, it's, it's a necessity. God forbid your amp goes down. Um, this thing can at least act as a power amp uh, to power your cab. Um, plus it's tiny. It takes up no room. It, and it works great, man. It's, um, it's an impressive piece of gear. And next is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, the radar is a cab simulator um, in a tiny stomp box format. Uh, this is one of the ways current uh, do-it-yourself touring guitarists have been leaving their bigger, bulkier, heavier gear uh, at home, uh, the cabs. Um, the radar is super versatile. Uh, it even lets you tweak with the, the software or even within it where you put the microphone. Your, your setup is amazing. Um, I can't tell you how many guys I see, including people I see on YouTube, um, using this or something similar where it's just, you know, into a DI and then directly to the board for their sound. Um, people are saying goodbye to the big gear uh, that they don't want to lug around. It's just um, that kind of setup is a solid win for everybody, uh, everybody involved as it saves money and it's the best signal direct to the board, um, especially during a live show. You get the added bonus of less stage noise. So yeah, the the radar is something I'd, I'd honestly, i check out. It really, <laughs> It's this tiny thing and it doesn't look super impressive, but it is. Uh, there are other products out there that are even more powerful, um, but again, they're bigger. They, you know, they come in racks that you have to uh, then also carry. It's, you know, it's more gear. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd check these out. They're, they're fantastic. Okay, um, finally, we come to the preamp live. Um, there are so many great reviews up right now um, for my PAL, <laughs> my pal. My buddy, my buddy, wherever I go, he's gonna go. I'm just gonna send you to them. Uh, check out your big guns, uh, Fluff, uh, Rabir, um, Ola. Uh, what I wanna do is give a quick overview of how I want to use it. Cause I'm actually not there yet. Um, first there's a bit of a misnomer about one of its key features. Um, it's got a fantastic, uh, tone capture. Um, but it doesn't, uh, actually capture the gain stage of, uh, your amp. It's actually just capturing the EQ. Um, it then pairs that EQ, with the gain of a preamp that you match to it uh, from your real, real amp. Um, but it, that, that comes from the preamp live. Uh, that's really convoluted and not what I wanna get into. Um, how I would love to use this is to capture all three of my amp channels. Clean, crunch, and f <laughs> you. Uh, I then use the XLR out here um, to go to the board for live shows. Uh, I might even get like a little monitor um, to come out of the unbalanced uh, here uh, so that I'd have it on stage. Um, or really, I should just use my amp for that because I have it right there for the show just in case. Um, honestly, Every time I I plug this thing in and I use it, it blows me away. It's got so many features. Um, it's got an app, actually, that's 
any you know tablet um, or phone uh, pairs via Bluetooth, and uh, it doesn't just have um, the the amps in it. It also has cab IRs, and it's got this great little switch. So, say I was to just go out um, from this, like my guitar in, uh, it's got an FX loop, FX, an FX loop, and um, so I could still use my more pedals uh, in here. That's my FX loop pedals, and I'm I'm telling you, it sounds fantastic. I've done the the tone captures. What I haven't really gotten to is honestly the fear of not having my amp. Um, yeah, I mean it's something that I slowly need to get over. Uh, but would you rather carry this? It's like not even it's like five pounds, or even my light amp is still, you know, that would triple that. So, yeah. My body and me, me, me. All right. Well, that's it. Um, I skipped over a few of the delay pedals. Uh, the other one of the bunch that I really liked is the Anna Echo. Uh, it's really good. Um, they're actually, they're all really good. But again, I like this other one for live. Um, if there's any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I promise I'll get back to you. Um, all right. Hopefully you were either entertained or learned something because I'm going to be giving a test the next time I see you. Even if it's from the stage. I'm going to be all, Dennis, what cable setup do I use? And then you'll be all like, I don't know, man. I don't pay attention. I don't know what's going to I first learned about more while checking out another pedal maker called Tone City. They had a few products that I had liked before, but it was by chance that I found more. I <laughs> Nobody cares about this. What the